Hey everyone, Alex Guide your fan coming at you with another video. Today I'm going to be doing the spoiler review of Shingajira. So in case maybe you were just clicking around your computer not even caring about what you were doing and you clicked onto this video and you did not see the title because you know your eyes have been on focus on the computer for too long and everything is just seeming all blurry and stuff like that. Well final warning but this is a spoiler review so if you don't want to get spoiled up to your armpits and spoilers click out of the video right now drive down to the theater or local theater and just see the movie already because it's only going to be there for a limited time. But anyway, out of with that out of the way, we're going to start with the spoiler review. So pretty much, um, I'm trying to remember the plot and characters and everything that happened as best as I could. Unfortunately, I don't recall like every single detail, so I'm going to be giving my thoughts on what I remember. And, you know, this might not be the best Shingo Jiro review, but if you want to hear my own personal thoughts on the movie, then here they are. So, a giant monster has appeared in Tokyo, you know, we got some problems in the ocean, and of course, the government is really just thinking that this is all a hoax, and I really just like how, like, they bring this kind of political structure with the government, how every time Godzilla is, like, going through the city, the government is like, what, what do we do, you know? And this movie, in all honesty, um, I expected it to be very grim, dark, moody, apocalyptic, serious, like, end of the world kind of stuff. Uh, of course, it wasn't the end of the world because this was only happening in Japan but I like the feel that this movie had where it felt like this is the end of the world you know humanity can't stop Godzilla you know what are you gonna do but at the same time with the seriousness of the movie and the soundtrack this movie also tried to be really funny you know there were some scenes that made me laugh also, for those of you guys who really despise me, the, yeah, World War II references, man. Like, for example, there, there was a lot of World War II references in this movie. Like, for example, one of the characters said, um, the last time Japan ever was involved in military action in the Imperial times, it cost the life of three million people. Or, for example, the United Nations wanted to drop a bomb on Tokyo to kill Godzilla. And they were like, we're not going to have a third atomic bomb. You know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were enough. And then they also said that this, the, when the self-defense force was dispatching against Godzilla, they said this was the first time the Japanese had ever launched themselves since World War II. So I'm like, yeah, I see what you did there, Japan. Actually, no, not really Japan. This is unintentional because Toho Studios could care less if you like World War II. But I bet if someone was watching this movie, he's like, Alex would love this, man. I mean, World War II references everywhere. It's like, yeah, those Imperial Japan references, man. I, I, I understand the history of that, yo. And so it's just pretty funny, you know, because I'm all about World War II. And people are going to be like, Alex, really, Alex? You know, they're going to be all like that in the comment section. And I'm going to have to, like, run away from my um, from where I live and just, like, you know, hide somewhere. But anyway, back on to the plot. Again, I did not tell my mom any of the details of the movie, you know. Um, I've been spoiled, you know. I already knew Shin Gojira was going to be frozen. I already knew he had two different forms. Monsters A and B, quote-unquote, were his two other forms. I already knew he could shoot lasers from his back and his tail. I already knew that they were going to be playing um, the 1954 theme whenever he transformed. Well, I think anyone really knew that at this point. That's not really a big spoiler. But pretty much, I knew a lot of details of the movie, in all honesty, you know. So, nothing really phased me that much. So, could be like, wow, really? I mean, even the end scene with the human-like skeletons appearing from Shin Gajira, I already knew that, you know. Um, Hedora and I already knew that, and so did Mephil Kaiji, so we didn't really care about being spoiled. But I didn't tell my mom anything about the movie. So, she, when she saw the first form of Godzilla come out of the water, she was like, wait, that that's Godzilla? It was kind of funny, because when she saw the first form of Godzilla, she thought it was like a little innocent creature. Like, she didn't laugh at it, but the thing is, I'm not sure if anyone agrees with this, but the first form of Godzilla kind of has this kind of adorable i want to say adorable but it has this kind of playful um not really playful either but kind of this unaware of what it's doing kind of thing where it's running through the city but it doesn't know about all the destruction it's causing the second form was definitely a lot more creepy you know there would just be scenes where the military's like dispatched against him and he will literally just stand still in the middle of the city for no reason third form was really epic like when he came ashore you got that classic nom um, king Kong versus godzilla and Terra Mechagodzilla theme. 
I mean, it was just so amazing. What I really loved about Shinga Jiro in his third form or fourth form, well, I guess you could count it as a fourth form because of the tadpole form, as the movie called it. But anyway, this um, the final form of Shinga Jiro was really amazing because whenever he would walk through a city, and of course we've seen it in the trailers many times, but when it, I just love the fact that whenever he walks through a city, you got all these cars, ships, crates just flying as soon as he just puts his foot down. Like it looks really realistic, you know. Godzilla 2014 did not have that. Whenever he just walks through the city, it's just all cool. But whenever it's 2016, he walks through the city, it just causes an an entire line of destruction literally you know and the purple atomic breath the purple atomic breath i did not mind it in all honesty you know i thought it was really cool but on to the main characters um again i don't really know their characters so just bear with me you know i, I mean i could have done some research on the characters but that's what kind of makes these kind of reviews more authentic because you're just going into the movie and just saying whatever you want to say about it so, our main characters consist of the guy with no glasses, who's like the young political guy. Um, we also have the guy with the glasses, the Prime Minister that, spoiler alert, he died! You know, the original Prime Minister died, and he got replaced. We also got the female U.S. Ambassador. You know, I, whenever she spoke English, I, I, just, I was just kind of smiling because it's like, yeah, speaking English, Anglo-Saxon language. So, she, she was always like, it's a code name, Godzilla. Like, that's the... And then she's always like, that's right. I'm so I'm like, oh man, I don't know why, but whenever she spoke English, I was just like, I, I didn't cringe at all really, but it was just that kind of moment where it was like, I don't know, it was just kind of funny to just see a movie with like nothing but Japanese and then they just speak English all of a sudden and it's just so abrupt, you know? Also, this movie had a lot of American and UN presence, you know? I feel like I was watching The Return of Godzilla again. Um, I kind of compare this movie to The Return of Godzilla as well, as long as as well as with 1954. But the thing is, is that um, the movie really did have a lot of international presence. You know, we definitely got to see the U.S. and Japan get involved and get ready for another boring history lecture that no one will absolutely care about. Okay, so after World War II, the United States had, of course, defeated Japan and they had surrendered. But, of course, later on in time, Japan came, became a democratic country, and the United States and Japan were very well-rounded allies in the Pacific. So, the U.S. said that if the Japanese was ever, were ever in danger, the United States would be, um, kind of, they would kind of have to help them. And we would definitely see this whenever the Japanese have hurricanes, or well, not hurricanes, tsunamis. The U.S. would definitely come in to help them and lend them support. And going along with this World War II scenario, the U.S. also, believe it or not, has bases stationed in Okinawa, which is the island off of mainland Japan, you know, after World War II, because one of the major battles in World War II that took place between the U.S. and Japan were, was on Okinawa, the small little island. So, you know, just, there's a lot of history. You know, this movie really connects with, like, real-life politics and um world war ii at the same time so i was like yeah this is great also france had a major role in this movie france was one of the only countries that disagree with the whole nuclear bat on um, nuclear bomb drop i was like france man france i mean i mean no offense france but i, I mean france was like the last country i ever expect also china and russia had a big presence too they were actually gonna like put shingajira in their government's control where they would be involved with this whole Shingajira problem too along with the US so you know lots of countries in the UN were really just involved in this you know, it was really crazy um, you know there was a lot of just World War 2 and tsunami allegories to go along with this thing also liked how although when Shingajira was coming again again the, the government had nowhere nothing no idea what to do like this was a new creature that they had faced and this was kind of in a realistic scenario because if a creature just came out of water for no apparent reason you're just going to be so surprised you know you don't know what to do also liked how in the movie they brought up Odo Islands again um it was pretty nice you know it's kind of funny because when people were seeing the Gaza 2014 trailer and they mentioned the nuclear bomb in 1954 most people thought Odo Island was going to be a part of this but surprisingly Odo Island was at least mentioned and this time Godzilla he's not called king of the monsters he's called god incarnate or the perfect life form that surpasses humanity. You know, this really reminds me of Ultraman Max's If. I mean, I know the two monsters are pretty different. Well, actually, they both can absorb any attack. But what I mean is, and they can, like, learn attacks and counter them. For example, whenever If was attacked, he could find a counter to us. Similar to Shingojiro can find counters whenever he's attacked by the military. But what I mean is, is that If from Ultraman Max was called, like, the perfect life form. So when I heard that, I was like, wow, this is similar to If, you know? 
And overall, I just thought it was really crazy. Now, one of my biggest problems that I had were some of the CGI effects, you know. There were some parts where the CGI felt like it was just place it, placed on a green screen and stuff like that, where it was just pasted on there. And there were some shots where, for example, one where Shingajira finally finished shooting his atomic breath, and he pretty much starts, just started stumbling. It looked like he was going in stop motion. It's just, it's just, he just fast walked for about two seconds. And I was like, wait, what? Like, was that an um, effect design? Or what was that? Is it because Godzilla is like so deformed that his movements can be rapid whenever they want to be? I mean, I don't know. I just kind of found that weird, honestly, you know? Um, sometimes the CGI effects felt like they could have improved, which were about three shots in my opinion. But otherwise, the CGI effects were really top-notch, like almost on par with Godzilla 2014, if I were to be completely nice and kind and honest. I mean, that's my own opinion, you know? I mean, that's just okay. I wish we got to see more battleship action, honestly. I would have loved to see some battleships go against Godzilla. Because I'm always all for sea monster versus battleships, you know? They rarely use battleships in this movie. And that's why I really like the Godzilla 2014 attack of Pacific Ocean scene. But the battleships were only there to search for Godzilla. They did not find him and stuff. But the military scenes were really classic. You got the lineup of tanks. All of them are just firing at Godzilla. You know, it's really crazy, you know? It's kind of funny because Japan was so hesitant to use actual weapons. So they started off with little machine guns to shoot at Godzilla. And once they saw that they did not hurt him, they used missiles, tanks, pretty much anything that they could get their hands on and just threw it all over the place at Godzilla. One thing that I really noticed about Godzilla in this movie is that he really did not target anyone. Like, he would walk past people in his first form, and there was a scene where the military soldiers were getting out of their bunker, and Godzilla just walked past them. And I thought that was really interesting, how this Godzilla was just walking through the city, and he wasn't even, like, attacking buildings, but mostly he was just walking through the city. And I thought that was pretty interesting, you know? People were saying that Godzilla shouldn't be a monster that it, that targets humans, but mostly just some force of nature, you know? Kind of like a hurricane. And this really went back to what Hedorah the douchebag actually said a while back. He said he wanted Godzilla to be like a tornado or a hurricane where it just goes to the city, but doesn't deliberately attack or target anyone, but it's just going through a city. That's exactly what Godzilla did in this movie. He just walked through the city but he didn't really like target humans well i mean he kind of did in the later scenes when he got the back spines also the u.s sent out stealth bombers man it was so cool to see the stealth bombers of course they got killed i mean oh wait 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 wait. speaking of the spell stealth bombers there was this really funny scene where godzilla destroyed a stealth bomber and the two other stealth bombers were like it's payback time yep Payback time. And do you know what it made me think of, guys? It made me think back to Godzilla 1985, where, like, the pilot said, Sayonara, sucker. Like, what is up with these American pilots always saying the most ridiculous things whenever they attack Godzilla? From Sayonara, sucker, to it's payback time. It's like, th this is so hilarious, you know? American pilots are, like, my favorite pilots in Godzilla movies ever, man. They always have the funniest things to say. Also, hashtag USA is the way to go, according to what the Japanese said in the movie when they actually attack Godzilla. Alright, I know I'm just really just babbling on, but that's what I kind of like about these spoiler reviews. You really just get to babble on, you know? Yeah, but I'm sorry if I'm really just babbling on here on out. Also, um, yeah, I thought it was just really great. Oh, wait, speaking of um, Shingajira real quick, um, I noticed that one actor close to the end of the movie, Galaxy Lord, or if any Ultraman fan, if you are watching this and you have seen Shingajira, I am not sure if anyone caught this, and this really blew my mind right here, and this is a suggestion to Super Ride Production Toho Studios, if they ever want to do this, you can fit Dark Zaki into Shingajira somehow if you ever have an Ultraman crossover, which I know would never happen, but it would just be something funny and cool to see. Okay, so the reason why I said this is because there is one scene. I really got to rewatch the movie and probably get, like, a picture of it. But there is, like, this guy who's, like, talking. He's, like, walking with everyone else. And I swear, it is Ishibori from Ultraman Nexus. I am not, I can't, I'm going to see if I can, like, find a picture or a clip. I'm probably sure I can't because he wasn't in any of the trailers because he was close to the end of the movie. But literally, there was someone, I'm not sure if he's the same actor, but that was Ishibori right there from Ultraman Nexus. And I am just thinking in my mind, oh my god, Dark Zoggy is in this movie. 
unknown hand. He is the one. Godzilla is secretly a space beast, and it's going to be Ultraman Nexus that has to stop Godzilla in the next movie. Like, oh my god. Dark Zoggy and Godzilla. I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, that would never happen. Like, never, ever. Um, anyway, continuing with my points. Um, you know, I'm really running out of things to say, you know, honestly. Um, I think I really said... Also, this movie has a weird thing for conference rooms, you know? Every time the government is going to make a decision, they switch to, like, a different conference room. And every time someone wants to talk, they have to, like, tap their hand, you know? Overall, this movie did have a lot of funny scenes in it. You know, it was something that I wasn't expecting, you know? Our theater was pretty interesting, you know? We had a lot of people that would, like, cheer... Well, not really cheer... We didn't really cheer that much, but we had a lot of, uh, we had an audience that, like, clapped at the end and really just laughed. I actually saw three other people with Godzilla shirts, and I thought it was pretty cool, you know? Of course, I didn't interact with any of them because, you know, I'm not really much of a social person. But anyway, overall, I thought the movie was just really great, you know? Um, it was nice to see some of the returning actors. I believe the Prime Minister that was there for the other Godzilla movies was more of, like, a retired soldier, I believe. But overall, again, um, I'm really just trying to think of some last things I want to say. I really hate it whenever you're, like, talking about something and you don't get something out in the, at the end of the video. And you're, like, rewatching it, like, why didn't I mention this? You know, why did I miss this? Um, again, that human skeleton part, you know, at the end of the movie, that is really just unexplained. I thought the whole freezing concept was pretty interesting, you know. Um, again, um, my mom was really expecting it, but I thought it was a pretty interesting concept. It reminded... They didn't do it the same way as they did in, like, the other movies. They did it with a bunch of pipes to, like, fill up Godzilla. So, overall, I thought it was pretty interesting, you know? Um, I don't have anything else to say right now. You know, I think I've said most of the things I've wanted to say. Not everything, though. Because I'm going to be watching this, and I'm going to be like, wow, why didn't I say that? But, anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have enjoyed this video, my final verdict for the movie is a 9 out of 10.